Hey guys, this is Poet Spice Jamie a Little Tulula, and I am here to do another like quilling flower tutorial because I wanted to show you this one, which is definitely different. This is the Crafter's Companion Art and Flowers Butterflies and Blooms collection, and it is done by Sharon Callis. And I'm trying to find her name on here somewhere. But this is one of the sh that Sharon Callis designed, and it is a quilling flower, but it's a little bit different. And so I'm going to show you how it's a little different and then some things that you can do. So here's the die set. You have a calyx to put on the bottom. Here's your actual quilling die. Now, the only thing that I don't like, and it's not even really I don't like, it's just that it's different from the other ones, is that this makes a much smaller flower ex in comparison to like the Anna Griffin one, which is a 12 inch strip and so forth. Okay, now on the plus side, it is smaller so that if you have a smaller um, die cutting machine, so if you had like a diamond press, one of the earlier ones that are smaller, or if you had a marquee, you could use this in the marquee because that's what I cut mine in. You could use like um, one of the sapphires. So you could use a small die cutting machine to cut these out, whereas if you had, um, like you have to have pretty much a large format in order to cut out the Anna Griffin ones and the other um, Crafter's Companion ones. So I want to show these differences. So here's the petals. There's two sets of leaves in here. And so it's so cute. This is what you get. And I made a bunch of them before because, you know, I make something and I can't stop making them. So there you can see a variety. And you'll notice that I made a couple sizes. So I made, this is one size, this is the second size, and this is the third one. So I'll show you how to do this because it's slightly different. Now I also use some Distress Ink. So I use Broken China, uh, fry, what is that, Fired Brick, and some peeled paint. <laughs> Look at my fingernails, okay, to do this. All right, so let's just do your single straight up how you do this. So here's the die. I cut it out once and I put some um, alcohol markers on here. And then what you do is you do not cut this. You don't cut it. So what you do is you fold it in half. Right? And so we're going to fold it in half so that you get two petals two layers of petals at one time. So if you're gonna ink them, you definitely wanna do both sides because you're gonna see both sides, right? So I'm just gonna press this down a little bit more. And it's just like you do any of the other quilling flowers. That's just the difference in how this one goes. So you don't cut it, you just fold it. You're gonna take it from here and do a little rolling up. And you don't have to add glue until the end, but I like to because I don't like the centers coming apart. So I'll just take some glue, roll that up. Make sure I'm in frame so you can see. And I actually found these to be a little bit easier to roll. Now on the other hand, sometimes it rolls so that the petals end up being behind each other, which they say is not supposed to happen, but it does sometimes. So sometimes you have to roll it a little looser or make it tighter, but either way, it still comes out pretty. So now we're at the end and I'm gonna hold that and put some glue on there. So, doo -doo -doo, like that. And then I'm just gonna curl that right on around and I'm gonna hold that down so see how cute that is? So cute. I'm just gonna hold it, pull off the thing, and there you go. Now, since there's two pieces of paper that you're trying to glue down, you wanna hold it for a little bit. And then you just pull these petals. And then you see what I'm saying? Like they do end up lining up behind each other sometimes. So you can just crinkle them up. You know, do a little pinching with them. And I'm still holding the bottom so I can do this while it's attaching itself and drying. But so you can manipulate these, scooch them one way or the other. Now I'm just pinching them so that they pinch down or pinch up. Kind of move it to fill. All right. Oh, move it back up. I'm gonna put some more glue on there because it didn't quite glue down like I wanted. 
we go. That should make it stay. See if I don't if I don't lose it again. There we go. So let me just redo that. So hold on to that. Pull them down. Do some scrunching. And you pretty much have a pretty little rose. So cute. Alright. So there's one that you can look like that to see. Right? Awesome sauce. So I'm just gonna stick that there. So that's just with one piece the way it was supposed to go. Alright, then I'm gonna show you the other one. So I wanted to see if I could make it bigger, and we were able to. So I took two. Remember, you don't you don't cut them down the middle, but what I did is cut this piece off at the end, the longer piece. Boop, boop, boop. So that we can lay it over like that. So we're just going to take some glue, put it here. Now, this will end up being four pieces of paper when you fold it. So you kind of will get a little thickness there. But it's okay. You just have to realize that. Wait till it dries. So see, we overlapped that piece. And this is the part that I cut off. All right, I'll just chuck it over there. All right, so now I have two pieces, and so I'm going to do the same thing and fold it in half. And for me, it's just easier to start with the longer piece and just kind of go down the line. I thought this came out as a cute little flower. Flower. So right here where they overlap, you're gonna have a little bit more to do. You just wanna make sure you hold that down a little bit. I probably should have waited a little half a second for more for it to dry. But it's as simple again. You're just gonna do the whole thing, fold it down. Do, do, do. Yes. And I'm going to take, now you could put some glue in here if you wanted to. I just haven't done it. I just push it like that. Then you're going to start again. And if you didn't actually have a quilling tool, you could do this with like a pencil or something like that. I just think it's easier. Once I got the quilling tool, I just thought it was easier to get these things started. Boop, boop, boop. So can you see that? And you're just gonna roll it around. Now you could do some shaping of the petals before you do that. I don't know, for me it's a little harder, so I just wait until I'm done and do it afterwards. But it's all a matter of personal preference. So whatever you like, you can do. Now because this is longer, I'm gonna add more glue in other places. But you don't have to, That's I just like it that way. I don't really want them to come in apart and go <laughs> when they unravel. All right, so here we go. Yep, yep, yep. So fun. And it's something you could just really sit there and do while you're watching TV or something. And you could end up with a whole slew of them. Just take a bunch of time, cut them out, and roll them up. So I got to the end here again. I'm going to hold that. And because it is bigger and it stayed on the thing this time, I'm going to pull it apart. So you can see how much fuller it is this way. And then you can do the shaping afterwards. Do, do, do. See that? So cute. So here you can see the difference between the size. I think that should be fine. Pull it right on off. And then you can see the bottom. And then you can go back and do your forming of your petals. Like I said, I just do the pinch and crunch, pinch and crunch. And then you have your flowers. So we can do some more. I'm just trying to do more at one time so you don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing. 
so you can get an idea. And you see, by inking it up, you get different levels of ink and so forth. So then it also makes your flower look more dynamic. The other thing is you could also go back and do the inking after you've done the flower, after you've rolled them all up. Either way, whatever is comfortable for you. So I'm just gonna go through this quickly. Go quickly, quickly. And I'll separate it out some more later on. Cause it's just kind of like trial and error, see what you like, bend it up, move it around, bend it up, move it around. You could also go through and like scrunch them down in the middle and make like a bud. You could go through, and I'll see here they've lined up a little bit. You just can carefully smush them to one side or the other. And then you have your flower and can pull them down some more. Oh, yes. So, so cute. Such a cute flower. Then, like I said, you have these additional pieces. And I inked these up with the peeled paint. And so this is your calyx, which you put on the bottom of your flower like that. So you can see. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and do one. Put that right there. Now the other thing that you could do is take this with some um, floral wire and stick it through the middle and then do that with your flowers so that you actually have them on some floral wire because you can see that hole in there. So you could do that and turn these into like a bouquet. A bouquet of flowers. So like you can put your calyx on like that. And then, and so if you wanted to, you could put like a gem or something in there, or you could just leave it puffed up like that. And then I'm not going to glue these leaves on because I don't know what I want to put it on yet, but you can see how you can take them and just add where if you want to. All right. So that's my little quick tutorial on doing this um, rose with the Sharon uh, callus design. So if you see these, you might want to try them from Crafters Companion. I got mine from Craft Stash, but they may still have some on the Crafters Companion site, and there might be some on HSN still. All right, thanks for watching. I hope that helped, and I shall see you guys later. Stay safe.